with a brand new deal. Throw your old cards away. Forget everything that upset you. Why, what in the world did it get to you? Shake hands with a brand new deal. What is this, a haunted house? What now, boss? We're gonna load the truck. All right, fellas, we'll load the truck. Okay, boss. in the head with that truck in a minute. Hey, how old are you? Well, the last time I was home, I hopped on my mother's knee and said, Daddy, how old am I? You hopped on your mother's knee and says, Daddy, how old am I? Sure. Oh, you call your mother Daddy. Thank me. You know, this this may be a personal question, but uh, what do you call your Daddy? Oh, we don't call him. He has an alarm clock. Woo! I knew that was coming. Hey, doorman, will you sweep her away, please? This is for you, sister. I know that one. Yeah. My grandfather went to West Point with her son. <laughs> Finally fell down and got a laugh. Say, if you fall down once in a while, you ham, you might get a laugh. My public didn't applaud tonight. Neither one of them. No rehearsal tomorrow. Listen, you came, costumes in the costume trunks. And neatly folded and not rolled. My goodness, Petunia, what is this stink? Look, Laura, number three. It smells like goat number. This is ripped. Who were you with last night? Strangler Lewis. Oh, catch as catch can, hmm? I'm telling you, if we could get the runs with this show that these dames get in their stockings, I'd be able to make the second payment on my kimono. Here, Clarence. Put that in the trunk. And don't wear it. Selfish. Mm. Oh, how do you do, Mr. Grady? How do you do? Call the company. Everybody on stage for Mr. Grady? From the look on the boss's kisser, it looks as if this show's gonna fold. <laughs> There'll be no novelty for you. Now, company, listen. You might as well hear the worst. You know I love you all. That's the worst. So I said to my partner last night, I must go over and tell the dear boys and girls the truth. <laughs> George Washington is back. That's not nice of you, Mert. You never lost a nickel out of this office. But I'll, I'll pass that and tell you what I came for. My partner and I are insolvent. Well, we all can't be healthy. We will never put on another show. But I am willing to make you a present of the entire production of My Lady's Legs, providing you are willing to release us 
from our obligations. Well, boys, another busto crusto. Well, that keeps our record clean. Thought you might continue with the show on a community basis. The book is good, the music is catchy. So is the flu, but what good is it? And if the big numbers were properly put on, they would have been a hit. You actors have been talking about us producers not knowing how to put on a show. Now is your chance. That's all I came here to say. That's the proposition. Take it or leave it. I hope you stick this lovely coat in your assets. You wouldn't wear it unless it had lace on it. I'd wallop him if I wasn't afraid of rubbing the polish off my fingernails. Well, fellow artists, what do you say? Well, I'm disgusted and I'm going back to Ireland. Oh, nice. Better listen if you don't want to start hitchhiking. You know the material is here, but what we need is some real performers to put it over. Meaning what? Yeah. yeah. What do you mean? Oh, in the first place, we have no cast. We have no comic. What am I supposed to be? A comic, but you couldn't make a laughing hyena smile. I pay my own room rent. That's something in my favor. That's your misfortune, not your favor. Oh, listen, folks, let's sit down and talk it over. Now, you know, the first thing we've got to have is a manager. And we've got to rehearse the show all over. And we've got to get a sucker. You should know plenty of those. Oh, go buy yourself a mirror and get your first laugh. Listen, listen. I know the very man. He owes me a big debt. What do you say if we meet at the hotel in the morning? Sure. Okay. Okay. Fine. Fine. Clarence, get a messenger boy. Say, Bert, what's the idea of panning me in front of the company all the time? You're a very funny fellow. But not on the stage. Hey, Gable. What? They're divvying up the show tonight, and they left the stage hands out. I think we're entitled to a piece of this show. But do we want it? Well, I got a few ideas on that subject. Now, all those in favor of electing me spokesman, say aye. Aye. That's unanimous. Say I'm the boss, ain't I? Yeah. Recede, will you? Recede. I'll do all the talking. When I go up in that room, don't worry about me. I'll give them out plenty of conversation, plenty of words. Give me a three-letter word meaning rat. Meaning rat? Yeah. Him. Okay, thanks. Help me on this one, will you? What's that? Who's the next heavyweight champion of the world? John L. Sullivan. Don't tell him. What do you want? John L. Sullivan? He's dead. He's been dead a hundred years. He ain't no fighter. He used to be a wrestler or something. Do you know who the heavyweight champion's gonna be? No. An Italian fella. Yeah? A fella called, uh, Canero. Hey, I saw him in a play. You saw Canero in a play? Yeah. The Cat and the Canero. Why don't you stop the Cat and the Canero? He's wrong. There was no cat in that. Oh, you're stopping. There was no cat in it. You're right. John L. Sullivan. Register you in, sir? Yeah. Hey, fellas, look. Just check the bag. Very well, sir. Might make good of luck. She's got the money, man. It's that no one. And he has volunteered to help us. Uh, this is Mr. Jackson, an old friend of mine. Hi, hello. Hi, Jackson. I told him what a wonderful opportunity he has with us, and he's agreed to listen. Now, as I figure it out, uh, we won't need more than $10,000 to reorganize. Only $10,000. 10000 yeah. Well, perhaps you'd better let Mr. Jackson tell us about it. Well, friends, there isn't much I can say, except that I know Mert. That is to say, I've met Mert, and the proposition appeals to me provided we can put the show on a business basis. Now, I imagine Mert feels that we should have some new people. What's that Mert thinks? Say, hey, listen, Gloom Dispenser. We want a young comic, one who can sing and dance and hand out a lot of good old-fashioned belly laughs. Well, you'll never get one any funnier than I am. Look at the start you got with that face. <laughs> hey, start. Mr. Jackson, I, I want you to understand, as a rule, we, we're more friendly than this. Now, hold on, folks. Before you go any further, don't you think you'd better consult the consecutives? Yeah, us consecutives. I'll explain everything. Yeah, Mr. Mullins will explain, and then we'll get an interpreter to go over it. An interpreter? How do you start? An interpreter? You're kidding the old-timer? For goodness sake, Mullins, what have you got to say? Well, I got this much to say, that Grady owes us as much money as he owes you folks. And if this show is going to be run on a community basis, here are four members of the community, and this show ain't going to go on without us. Say, Mert, who are these gentlemen? Gentlemen, cut out the sarcasm. Oh, a wise guy. Who do you think we are? A lot of crumbs or something? Mullen, you and your gang are in. Okay, you okay, put it over, Mike. She's in. I know what's wrong with this show. 
And uh, one of the things is me. I I'm getting old. I'm on the toboggan and slipping fast. So, so I'm going to step out and give some youngster a chance. I darn sight rather be manager of a hit than the star on a flop. <laughs> wondering if I've made an awful mistake. What do you mean? About that Eddie Hanley fella? Yeah, you took an awful chance taking a raw kid out of vaudeville. No, he's been in vaudeville a year. The kid's a riot, and besides, he has great ads in the variety. Hey, Mike, there's a loud suit outside with a guy by the name of Eddie Hanley in it. Well, tell him to come in. Greetings and salutations. I repeat, greetings and salutations, ladies and gentlemen, and you too. Haven't we met before? I don't think so. This is my first girl's show. <laughs> Pardon my seeming lack of pep. How are you? How are you? I've been up all night laughing at my own material. <laughs> Hiya, Mullen. Hello, kid. <laughs> hey, electrician. Get the name right on them electric lights. Say, you don't use the Yankee Stadium for a hat, do you? Finesse it. Finesse it. On the opening night, you'll hear two kinds of noises. The audience cheering me and the other shows folding up. He certainly likes he. Eddie always talks that way. When that curtain goes up, he'll mangle them. He'll mangle them. Says you. Yes, says me. And if I'm wrong, I'll eat the first four rows. <laughs> of course, I'll have to skip the musicians. Oh, say, Mullen, it won't make a bit of difference what you think of them. It's up to old John Public. You said a mouthful, <laughs> sir. All I want to do is sit around and listen to the book and hear the jingle. I hate to think how much good I can do this show. That's just swell, because you don't know how much we've been done. Now, stick around and we'll show you a few things. All right, girls, opening a first act. Say, everybody, you can all take long leases on your New York apartments. Handley has spoken. <laughs> Play it, Jeffrey. <laughs> got a great personality. You ought to put the works on my mother and see if you can't get Marge to go with this show. Don't seem to be a chance. I met her two years ago when I first played this bird. I always stop here. Well, I found out then how much stuff she's got. Oh, she's immense. It's too bad we can't get the mother to acquiesce. Maybe her mother does. Why don't you ask her? Why don't you stop? I talk with Mrs. Minna, but, uh, well, if anybody could do it, I could. Because she's crazy about me. Here's to Mrs. Miller, who has every actor's heart. And plenty of actors' trunks. Sit down. Don't you know ham spoils if it stands too long? <laughs> <laughs> she's crazy about you, Eddie. <laughs> hey, what? What are you looking for? I haven't got a soybean yet. Yeah, thanks. We could use a tomato like Marge in our show. Don't call a swell dish like that a tomato. Pardon my glove, stranger. Get him while they're hot. Marge, we were just talking about you. Yeah, I was telling the bunch what a great trooper you'd be if you only had a chance. 
Oh, for goodness sake, what'd you do that for? If you're as good as Eddie says you are, you ought to be with the show. And besides, you can get a piece of the show. Listen, baby, after you get your work done, I'll take you down to meet Merton and Mr. Jackson. Now, I'll step in at the finish to help you with your pattern. Of course, it wouldn't be any good unless I did straight for you. It'll kind of put a sort of a, a high-class touch to it. Then I'll talk to your mother. Gee, I'd be scared to death before all these professional people. Professional people? Professional people get paid. Always mercenary. That's from drinking too much coffee. Now, listen, baby. You run along in a hurry now, see? And I'll wait for you. All right, hon. I, I mean, Eddie. <laughs> Another redskin bit the dust. Ah, oh, it ain't fair. It ain't fair. Millions of lonesome women in the world, and only one Eddie Handley. <laughs> Come on, fellas. Cut out the hard work. What's the matter? On your feet, rats. Say, I got an idea. What, another one? No, this is a swell idea. No more hard work, fellas. I'm gonna make gentlemen out of you. I'm gonna make actors out of you. Performers. Artists to the fingertips. What? Gentlemen of the ensemble. You mean we're sissies? Who's a sissy? Do I have to curl my hair? Stop that nonsense. Don't act silly. I'm gonna make actors out of you. High class fellas. We're gonna do the same act that we did at the fireman's ball. How can you tell how you're going without an audience? Say, this show hasn't had an audience for six weeks. And besides, if these ham holders would ever see an audience, <laughs> they'd get stage fright. They won't stand for that. It's compulsory. It's mandatory. They got to. Sure, we're in this show for any part of the profits. Here, shake hands with one of the losses. Fellas, here's the idea. We're going to do the same act we did at the fireman's ball. You remember that, don't you? Yeah. Do you remember how they applauded? No. You don't remember how they applauded? Why, the governor of the state heard it when he walked in. Why, they applauded and applauded and applauded until he sat down. Now, we're going to do the same act. We're going to rehearse it now. You remember the old routine? Yeah, I know, Mike. the white horse? Yeah, yeah. 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 Now we'll get organized, you understand? I get nervous with this acting stuff. There's nothing to get nervous. You're an old-time trooper, ain't you? Yeah. Listen, Curly, here's what we're going to do. Two introductions, piano and 40, then we seg segue, and we give a little staccato, and then we modulate. Yeah, but what do I do with the piano? Oh, you eat it. What do you think? Introduction. Let me hear it. Okay, I'll give you the one, two. Okay, let me hear it. One, two. That's it. Now look at me now. That's it. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to give an impersonation to a big star, big star on the stage and a big star on the screen, and I really believe you know who he is as soon as I start. Come take a chance, learn how to dance. It's the hottest thing I've found. You know, it's time for recreation. Dancing my heels around. What can I lose? Wearing our shoes. You know that my heels are on the ground. Time for rejuvenation. Dragging my heels around. Smile at me, mammy. Smile at me. When you smile, the whole world smiles. You know what it is, don't you? Exactly. Yeah, you're getting warm. Mammy, here's your big boy, Sammy. He's back from Alabama. Put on those eggs and hammy. Don't flim flammy, Mammy. Time for recreation. Dragging my heels all around. Here I go. I'm going to town. Together. You old son of a gun. Well, Miss Murray, I didn't know that anyone was looking. We never expected anybody to see it. Well, well, when did you boys get this? And why? Well, we got this act last summer at the Fireman's Ball. It was in for sake. Yes, and we was the hit of the show. Of course, there was only three acts. And two of the acts was detained elsewhere. <laughs> <laughs> well, boys, what are you going to do with it? Well, we offer you our talent. But we don't want no interest in the scenery. Say, if we keep losing the scenery and clothes like we did through the state of Pennsylvania, by the time we get back to New York, <laughs> we'll all be naked. Oh. <laughs> Mullinger, funny. <laughs> I wish you was an audience. Oh, Eddie, Eddie, I'm scared. Come on, come on, don't be nervous. You're as good as signs. Hey, fellas, 
Do you know the road to Mandalay? Yeah. Do you want us to play it? No. I want you to take it. Hi. Hey, Mert. Mert, this is Marge. My mother runs the boarding house where we live. How do you do, Marge? Now, my name is Jackson. How are you? Getting better every minute. Marge is a little nervous, but I persuade her to come down here and show you what she can do. No doubt. She can do most anything. Wait a minute. Just what does Marge do, Mr. Hanley? Well, she sings and dances. We got a little routine together. I suppose you did your little act at some strawberry festival? Oh, yes, and I did it at the Elk Show, too. You know, I never attended a strawberry festival, but I attended a meatball. <laughs> Alone? No, with spaghetti and the whole thing. And... Hey, Murray, Marge has certainly got it. Eddie, when she steps... Eddie, come on out here. I want to talk to you. Pardon me, babe. Hey, what's the idea, Eddie? You know the show can't afford to carry your Jane. Shh. Wait a minute, Murray. She's no Jane. She's a sweet kid. And she can true. Yes, and so can every shop girl in the state. But this is not amateur night in Dixie. Oh, listen, Murray. Maybe the girl can do something. What this business needs is young blood. <laughs> and I suppose you are going to give the transfusion. Oh, don't be stupid. Since a little Kelly girl left, you haven't anybody. We don't need anybody. Yeah, but this kid will click. Even if I am the big attraction with the show, I'm willing. Well, we could do with a little more business. You know, I agree with Eddie. We ought to give the girl a chance to show what she can do, and then that would be time enough to judge. Well, all right, if that's the way you feel about it, let's give the kid a break. Oh, that's great. Oh, Marge, it's okay. Come on, honey. Let's show the folks the big ass. Oh, Eddie, stop. Don't mind Eddie. You see, he likes me, and he thinks anything I do is good. She shows more sense than Eddie. <laughs> and don't get nervous like I was. I shook so, my handcuffs fell off. <laughs> All right, Margie, let's see what you can do. Well, I brought my music with me. Uh, who plays for me? Well, if it's not too intricate, I'll kick it all around. And you'll do the number with me, Eddie? Pork and beans, lettuce and tomatoes, me and you. Like wines and beers. <laughs> we got to knock them dead right from the start, Eddie. Say, uh, I'll bet she does imitations, too. Say, Mullen, look out for your high blood pressure. Watch out for your own. Leave me alone. I'm all right. <laughs> all right, Clarence. What would you give to be wealthy and live in style? I'd rather live to be healthy. It's more worthwhile. It often seems a lot of money can make a person act so strange. I have no money, but honey, how can I change? What is sweeter than the sweetness of I love you? That expression, broad confession from tell me. Seems so funny, all the money I've tried to save. Would deny me, couldn't buy me the things I crave. Rich or poor doesn't mean a blessed thing. Lots of wealth would never bring. A different view. Lots complete, and we'll compete with a Joneses too. What is sweeter than the sweetness of I love you? Show. You see, uh, her mother isn't stuck in the theater. I know. 
It's the old gag. The daughter won't go any place without the mother. <laughs> and the mother will go any place. I admit I'm a little selfish about it, but I want to do all that I can to help my show. Of course, Mr. Jackson. But you see, uh, I understand how theatrical people live. Here today and gone tomorrow, eating this and that. With no real home life any more than a goldfish. Marge isn't used to that sort of thing. Say, why don't you come with us? Now, that'll solve the whole problem. And give up my business? Oh, you know, this boarding house has made me a good living, even with all the cheap hotels and cafeterias. <laughs> oh, no. Mother, Aunt Helen can come over and take care of it. That's right, Aunt Helen. She can come over here and take care of it. You pipe down. Say, that's not a bad idea. I wish you'd try and arrange it. It'll be a great chance for Marge and a vacation for you. And a season on the road with me will fix you for life. What do you mean, fix her for life? And, uh, theatrically, my good woman, theatrically. Oh, Mom, please. Do you really want to go to get your great chance? Or is it to be with that windmill? Mother, there's nothing in the world that means anything to me except my love for you and my chance in the theater. <laughs> well, well, I'll... Uh, all right, dear. I I'll, I'll ask your Aunt Ellen to come and take care of the place. And uh, I I'll let Marge go, but I'll go with her. Hooray! Yeah, you just save your hoorays. And, young man, the only time you see Marge, she'll have a purse on her left arm and me on the other arm. Okay, officer. I'll leave quietly. Hey, Mullins! Mullins! What do you give want? Me, give me a hand with this trunk, will you? Don't ask me to work. You know that I'm muscle-bound. Say, hey, Eddie. What is it? Mullins is threatened with a nervous breakdown from underwork, and I'm terribly worried. Why don't you get a haircut? That'll get a load off your mind. Listen, don't bother me, will you? I'm rehearsing. Oh, you're jealous. I'm jealous. I gotta cut out this hard way. You should have did it previously. I should have did it. Are you an Oxford man? Yeah. Go back to high shoes. In Altoona, I'm going to issue the Alma Mater. Not Alma Mater, Ultimator. Oh, I see. You getting tired, Curly? Yes, I'm so tired, I need a rest. Why don't you get some old clothes and spend a couple of weeks in his hair? You know you guys are getting to be a burden? A what? A burden. You know what a burden is, don't you? Yeah, a burden of hands by two in a bush. You know you're going to regret these sarcastic remarks someday? Starting when? Right now. Stop that. Oh, oh hello. Hello. Oh, hello. <laughs> really? Don't, really? don't walk. Run to the nearest exit. Where are we going? Have you got another contract? Yes, here it is. <laughs> what does he look like? Well, I don't remember his face, but I know he had had appendicitis. How do you know? He told me. Okay. I understand we're going to Milwaukee. Now, wait a minute. Cut. You don't trust me, eh? Take a card. What color is it? Red. Red? Red. Uh, you go to Reading, Pennsylvania. But I must go to Milwaukee. No, you don't understand. They call the town Milwaukee on Sunday, Cleveland on Monday, Pittsburgh on Tuesday, and Boston on Wednesday. And what about Thursday? Thursday is the maid's day out. And you know I gotta stay home with the cook. <laughs> Let me see, what day is today? Tuesday. Tuesday, and you wanna go to Milwaukee. Well, first, you gotta go to Pittsburgh, and you better hurry up, because it's getting late. And if it gets after 12, you should be in Washington. But Washington is dead. The crack still goes. Hey, wait for baby! This is the scene I like best. This is where I punch your mother right in the nose. What? Oh, I mean, in the script. Oh, well, that should be very good. Yeah. Let's go through it. Okay. When we get married, we will be annoyed by your mother visiting us. I should say not. No. She couldn't get through the door. <laughs> <laughs> Honey, am I the biggest thing in your life? No. Your old lady is. What's the idea of making remarks about me? Well, we, we were just going through the script. The script, yes. The script. Well, well, he put a lot of heart in those cracks he made about me. Oh, oh. my dear, Mrs. Minner, why, uh, you know I love you. I wouldn't hurt you for the world, Mrs. Minner. Why, those are script lines, yes. yes. Uh, that's the cue for my dance. What dance? Why, this dance, Mrs. Minner. 
Tuesday. when one is in their early 30s. <laughs> You're prematurely gray, Mrs. Minter? <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, my father had white hair when he was 38. When your father was 38, eh? Yes, 38, around the waist. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Mother? <laughs> you know, Mother? You don't mind if I call your mother. You remind me so much of my own. I wouldn't let Marge come with this show if I wasn't sure that both you and myself could keep a motherly and fatherly eye on her. <laughs> You're a good man. Anybody can see that. Thanks. <laughs> well, that's a sure fire. You've got everything that it takes. What does it take? It takes everything but nerves. Forget about it. Now listen. The audience out front, they're for you. Backstage, we're all for you. And nobody's gonna bite you and say, listen, with that personality, why, that'd get over the footlights if they kept a curtain down in front of it. Thanks, old timer. Say, Eddie, will you go over the lyrics with me? Why, sure. There's the verse. And the chorus goes like this. What a sweet love and the sweetness of I love you. That expression brought confession from self me. Seems so funny, all the money I've tried to save. Would deny me, could buy me the things I pay. Rich, old, poor, doesn't mean blessed to see. Lots of wealth would never bring a different view. Lost complete, and we'll compete with the Joneses too. What a sweet of them, the sweetness of our love you. Taking your mother to the train. Why? Johnny's all smoked up over you. 
Well, I wish he wouldn't like me. Wouldn't be so bad if he liked you. But that guy is on the mate. On the mate? Yeah. I know the type and I know their line of talk. You know, after the first word is out of their mouth, I can go right on with the sentence. My wife doesn't understand. Where have you been all my life? A lot of cheap mechanical speeches with as much sincerity as a head waiter's handshake. Myrtle, I never knew show business was like this. Why can't they let you alone when they know you really love someone? Margie, when you romance in the theater, you're in love's bargain basement. What do you mean? Oh, a million guys will try to paw you, but there's nothing in the world going to get you any place in show business unless you've got it when they turn on those footlights. Of course, you know, Margie, if you accept Johnny Jackson's attentions, somebody's going to get all smashed up, either you or Eddie Hanley or Jackson's wife. You know, Eddie, in all these towns we play, I know a lot of nice people. And they all want to meet Marge. In fact, they want to take her to supper. But I've never done it because, well, I don't want to hurt your feelings. Do you understand? I get you, Mr. Jackson. But I never kept her from going. It was her mother. Well, her mother is gone now. And uh, you don't want to be unreasonable and keep the kid tied down. She should meet people. She rates it. Sure, sure. One thing I can't figure out, why they never ask me? They certainly know I'm with the show. Yes, but... Don't you see, you're sort of a half star. And the reason they don't ask you is, well, they're afraid that you'd refuse them. Not at all, not at all. I'd gladly come. You know, I'm not like those other celebrities. Yeah, I know that. Are you girls hungry? I can always eat. How about some chow mein? Oh, I don't think we care for any, do we, Marge? No. No, on second thought, I think we'll go to the hotel. Good night, folks. Good night. Careful, little fellow, isn't he? He's not an actor. He's a cop. I thought I was in love once, but it was indigestion. I'll take a test, learn how to dance, say a and you the right bound. Oh, what a new sensation, dragging my heels around. We're in our children. Oh, no, 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 but dear. You knit three, curl two, drop one, and then continue to the end of the row. You'll be knitting the noodles next. So you want to join our show? Oh, yes. But I'd have to have a contract. Here. What would Emily Post say? Eat with the other hand. One thing I like better than Charmaine, and that's duck. <laughs> duck the chair. Excuse me, will you? I want to call up my brother in Boston. You know, he's been thinking about that call ever since he sat down here. Well, I might as well get this off my chest right now. You know, our show is sitting on a volcano, as it were. What do you mean, as it were? I wouldn't hurt a little sensitive soul like you for the world. But your friend Jackson's gone and got hot and high about Mars. Oh, that isn't hurting me, kid. I wouldn't pay five cents a pound for saps like Johnny Jackson, except for the good he can do it. That's not the idea. He's got his dough on the show, and he's stuck on Marge, and Eddie doesn't like it. Now that we're on the verge of making something, I feel as though we're living next door to a pest house. Hello, dear. I'm sorry if I disturbed you, but I'd like to see you before you go to rehearse tomorrow. All right, Mr. Jackson. It was awfully nice of you to call. All right, dear. I'll see you in the morning. Bye-bye. Take it from me, Casey. We'll just let this egg play his hand out. How's your brother in Boston? My brother in Boston? Yes, your brother in Boston. You just phoned him? Oh, my brother in Boston. Oh, he's fine. You know, I bet these girls will understand me. Yeah? Savvy? Savvy Confucius? I bring sex into this. It's not sex. What's the matter with you? Does your father have a cue? No. He doesn't play billiards. Oh. What's that? He's a hunter. But what's the key for? <laughs> He's a house hunter. Oh. <laughs> what's your name? My name is Sue. But everybody calls me Susanna for short. Oh, yes. Uh, well, uh, yeah. where were you born? In my Aunt Minnie's house. 
And where does this Aunt Minnie live? She moved. Exactly where were you born? In the front room on Thursday morning. How do you know it was Thursday? Because the next day they wouldn't give me any meat. Well, uh, do you uh, have an address? I know Lincoln's Gettysburg address, but I forgot the words. Well, where do you get your mail? Oh, you can leave a note for me in the candy store downstairs. Yes, well, I have no intentions whatsoever of writing you. What salary do you expect? Oh, I'm not particular, as long as it's small. Oh, you want a small salary? Yes. Aunt Minnie says, always work for a small salary. Then if you don't get it, you don't lose so much. Yes, <laughs> yes, well, you must excuse me. I'm a wreck. I've been on my feet ironing all day. Good evening. Hello. I want you to meet uh, Bo Ching and Bo Ling. How do you do? And this is Bo Hunk. How do you do? Are you girls having a good time? Yes, ma'am. Well, folks, it's my birthday and I'm celebrating. I'll pay the check. Mert, lend me five. Put some beef on it. Oh, right. What's the matter with you? Hey, hey, where's Mr. Hoosey? Who's he? He's the man that gave me this contract to join the show. Say, if you keep on getting any more contracts, nobody will be able to send their laundry out. You seem to lack confidence in me, yeah. but you know, I think of some very funny things. Yeah. This morning, I thought of one that even made me laugh. That's what you call sure fire. Now, listen to this. A man came home early one night and couldn't find his keys. That's marvelous. That's the funniest story I've ever heard. <laughs> Stop with that. I'll hit you a crack in the head. I'll see you around later. I must have forgotten part of it. Try hard. Maybe you can forget the whole thing. Now, let's see. A man came home early one night, couldn't find his keys. Why didn't he open the window? The windows were open. <laughs> you walked right into that one. Yeah, I'm walking right out again. Yeah. Then something happened. It wasn't a tall, dark, thin father with a blonde voice, was it? No. Something about a contract? No. That wasn't enough. A man came home early one night and couldn't find his keys, and he walked around the block 600 times. Congratulations. That's that my idea of a great story. <laughs> Stop that, will you? I'll hit you up. Stop, Nick. I Stop. hate those jokes with the funny answers. So do I. I wonder what I left out. I wonder who left you out. Oh, <laughs> Oh, I have it. I have the whole, <laughs> now she's got it, I the whole thing. Yes. A man came home early one night and he couldn't find his keys, so he walked around the block 600 times and he was all in. <laughs> <laughs> he was all in. That's a good one. Just, he was all in. Not punch drunk or anything. Just say, I won't say au revoir because I know you won't understand me, but as I walk out, I'll have a piece of mistletoe on my coattail. Hey, fellas, grab that broad, will I'm going to put your name out in lights and make you the biggest star on Broadway. Oh, Eddie, did you hear about it? Uh, Mr. Jackson's going to put my name out in lights. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I, I want to talk to you and Mert tonight after the show about changing the billing. Your name out front ain't enough. You may be known to vaudeville audiences, but they're going to give large star billing. I'm going to give them plenty of billing. There may be plenty of billing. But no cooing. Yeah. Eddie, don't do that to Mr. Jackson. What's all this talk about Mr. Jackson? You seem to be worrying about the guy. A rip? My dear, it looks like King Kong wore to a masquerade. And a poor, insignificant manager kisses new big star. Oh, please. And another thing I want to tell you. I... Get up. Now you listen to me. 
You can take it or leave it, smart guy. I don't care what you do. Only you're not going to make a good time excursion party out of this troop. You can stay or you can leave. But if you stay, you let Margie alone. That's a lie. You're telling me what I can do with my own show. And you let that Margie kid fight her own fight. You know your own business, Johnny. But if you run into a storm, don't say I didn't warn you. Louder. They can't hear you in Philadelphia. I'll go into your nip on Say, quiet. I think we got mice out in front. I'm an old trooper myself. You're right. What are you doing, Margie? Well, just putting in a long distance call to Mother. Listen, kid. Never run away from trouble. It always catches up with you. Oh, Myrtle. Will I lose my job? Not as long as I'm boss of this outfit. But he was drunk and he didn't know what he was doing. I think you like this guy, Jackson. Oh, I don't like him at all. Well, what are you defending him for? I defend anybody who's being unjustly spoken about. Ah, oh, my little Pollyanna. I'm not a Pollyanna, but I am over 18 and I'm well able to choose my own friends and company. And I'm not going to be dictated to. Well, I'm not going to have my girl accepting attention every time Dick and Harry that comes along. Well, I'm not accepting attention from anybody. And you can underline that anybody. And I'm not your girl. You'll regret that speech if you see my name up in lights. When I see your name up in lights, it'll be over a hamburger stand. Get out of here. I just want to talk to you one minute, Marge. Well, get out of here. Don't you realize that I can make you the biggest star on Broadway? Get out of here. Don't make so much noise. Everybody in the hotel will know I'm in well, your room. Well, what do I think of you in here? You'll have to get that man out of your room. Or keep him quiet. Get out. All right. Go ahead. I'll go. Can I come back? Oh, yes, yes, Elsie. Please, All get right. out of here. I'll be back. Oh. What's going on here? Well, it, it's all right. I Sorry about the crack you made about the hamburger stand. Oh, no, it's Jackson. Jackson. Jackson? What about Jackson? He broke into my room. He <laughs> broke into your room? Yes. Yes, and he's coming back tonight. He's coming back tonight? <laughs> Just step inside and rest yourself. <laughs> he's coming back tonight. You're a smart girl. You know you'd have never gotten anywhere with that hand, Henry. I've met a lot of girls in my time. But up until the time I met you, I've never been hit so hard.
Let me take a bow. Yes, yeah, she can take that in front of the judge. Oh, oh, can't you postpone this? It'll ruin our show. Nothing can hurt this hokey pokey. You can find a judge at this time of night to sign a bond. It's okay with me. But you stayed in worse hotels than our little jail. Come oh, on. Oh, Eddie. Don't worry, Margie. Can you take off his grease? Yes. Come All on. All right, Eddie. We'll be down to bail you out. Yeah. Go downstairs and call me up in Jackson's room in ten minutes. Call you in Jackson's room in ten minutes? Yeah. What for? Oh, you'll find out. I told you how you stand. There's no sense in you wasting your breath. Johnny, can't you say anything but no? All we're asking you to do is to tell the authorities that you're as much to blame as Eddie. Tell them it was a fight. And leave Margie's name out of it. No, there's no use of going all over that again. My final answer is no. I'll get it. Mr. Jackson's room, nurse speaking. No. No, I know you might. This is Mullins. You know, you asked me to call. Yes, Mrs. Jackson. This is not Mrs. Jackson. This is Mullins. No, Mrs. Jackson. Mullins. You think I'm a sissy or something? No, no, Mrs. Jackson. He wasn't hurt very badly. This is not Mrs. Jackson. Murray, this is Mullins. You asked me to call. Well, I'll tell you just how it happened. He was going into... No, 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 Murray. Don't do that. I can't afford to have any more trouble at home. How about Eddie Hanley? All right, you win. You win. Oh, Mrs. Jackson, he's fine now. He'll be able to talk to you tomorrow. Goodbye, Mrs. Jackson. The guy with the wagon will get you. It doesn't matter what that silly broad. I won't prosecute him. That's nice of you, John. Listen, Hannah can get out of this any way he can. He can go anywhere he pleases. In fact, the whole show can do the same. What do you mean? I'm through with this whole outfit. And I'll give you seven days to give me back the 18,000 that you owe me. And if you don't, I'm going to take every bit of scenery, costume, or anything else. Oh, don't be so vindictive about it, Johnny. I'm not vindictive. But you got that goody-goody Marge and that wise guy, Eddie, and you yourself who think you wrote show business? All right, combine your respective talents. And give me back my 18,000 before you open this show in New York. Oh, we can't pay you off until we get to New York. And you'll not get to New York until you pay me off. Much as I hate to tell you, if New York wants to see this show, New York will have to come here. Jackson has withdrawn, and we have no money for railroad fare. Well, couldn't we walk back? That would be the first time you ever walked back. 
Oh, there's nothing more to be said. We all did our best, and it's the same old gag all over. The actors take the rap. But we've had a lot of fun, and I'm glad I met you all, and I hope we meet again. Mother! I'll mother you when I get my breath for your idea. After all this terrible trouble, people getting arrested and thrown in jail. Not a word sent to me. I had to read about it in the newspapers. Well, sit down, Miss Minter, and don't have apoplexy. Well, why wasn't I told? Wasn't it my daughter in trouble? And that reminds me, what was she in trouble about? Through that little ham. And I always told her that an actor would break her heart. Well, why don't you say something? How'd you get out of it? Is he dead or what? Break the news to mother. Well, Mrs. Minter, Mr. Jackson has agreed not to press the charges, so that part's settled. Well, what were you fighting about? What was I fighting with him for? Well, uh... Oh, uh, well, you see, uh, we've been kind of scrapping all season. Ever since I've been with the show. Now you know you're lying. What is it? What was it about? Oh, Eddie, we might as well tell her. She'll find it out anyway. Mother, Mr. Jackson broke into my room and, and tried to make it look like... Well, Jackson broke into your room? And that's what you were fighting about? Eddie, I always said you were a darling boy. Uh, well, that's all over. But he's got the show all sewed up. We have a great chance in New York if... If what? Well, if we had enough dough to get out of this burg and, and pay him off. Do you think I'd let a show close with my daughter her first show and her first big chance? No, sir. I sold my boarding house, and I'm with this troop to stay. <laughs> as far as Jackson is concerned, well, I'll take care of him. <laughs> you mean you're going to loan us enough money to get to New York? Why, I bought the show. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't mind telling you that I'm just darn glad to be here. <laughs> a stack of wheat cakes. On the fire! <laughs>
did it. Say, you're putting on weight, ain't you? Listen, Mr. The critics out there are raving. It's a sure hit. I've just bought in eight weeks. I'll sell plenty of tickets for this show. Oh, all our troubles are over. I'm here with the sheriff to attach the show. Mother, this show's a hit as sure as you weigh 300. Now, I want to talk to you, Mert. <laughs> yes, and I want to talk to you. I'll teach you to get fresh with my daughter. You cad. You cad. What is sweeter than the sweetness of I love you? You have been listening to another broadcast of Merton Mars. This is station OGOK. Your announcer is bidding you good night. Good night, Eastern States. Good evening, Middle West. Good afternoon, Pacific Coast. Would deny me good and buy me the things I pray. Rich or poor doesn't mean a blessed thing. Not the wealth would never bring a different view. Think of a shoulder too. Why?